So this lecture on the Monophysite heresy follows on the discussion of the Creed of Union. So in the previous video, I spoke about the Creed of Union um, as, a, as a compromise, uh, but as compromise between the schools of, um, of Antioch and Alexandria. So you had the two theological schools, one representing a low Christology, one a high Christology, and uh, the Creed of Union was a compromise statement, but not compromise in the sense of watering down uh, the, the content of the faith. Uh, was more uh, compromise in, in generally accepting uh, theological strands that one is not necessarily comfortable with, but one accepts to be uh, quite valid. All right, so the Creed of Union, we, uh, we said, was, was, uh, was sort of accepted in, in place. It, it made uh, reference to the dual natures in, in Christ, okay, as, um, as well as uh, focusing on the unity of Christ. So it satisfied both schools of, of thought. Okay, but I did say uh, Cyril, who was the patriarch of Alexandria, was the one who kept the peace. And when he died in 444, uh, then we had sort of the rumblings of the Alexandrians who were uh, very much opposed to this creed of union. So this leads us to what we call the Monophysite heresy. So in 448, um, a monk by the name of Eutychus, that's how I think it's said, uh, he rejected the Creed of Union. And, and he accused the, its defenders of, of, the, of Nestorianism, that's of uh, being Nestorians. Remember, Nestorius was the person who rejected the title of Theotokos from Mary, who said Mary uh, should not be called Mother of God. And the Council of Ephesus in 431 rejected Nestorius and said Mary is rightly called Mother of God. So Eutychus is uh, rejecting this creed of union and accusing the defenders of the creed of union of Nestorianism. Nestorianism. So instead, what does he propose? Um, he proposed that there was only one nature in Christ, and that nature is divine. Okay, and this is the monophysite heresy. So if you think of this word, mono, uh, it usually means one, okay, and then the Greek word physis um, is where we get the word physics from, which means nature. So physics is the study of nature. So the uh, so to be a monophysite means um, uh, one nature. That's it. You think Jesus has one nature. So the opposite position now of this, the opposite of monophysite. is diophysite. That's okay, that. So a diophysite is someone who, who um, accepts that Jesus has two natures. Okay, so that's the monophysite heresy is that Jesus has one nature, and that the nature is divine and the diophysite positions that Jesus has two distinct natures. So just to set up uh, to talk about some of uh, the theological reasoning here, uh, this is really a question about um, what happens when divine nature comes in contact with human nature. Okay, so you can think of three different options right, in response to this. The first option is that the divine nature completely absorbs the human nature and all that is left is the divine nature. That's one option. Another option would be that 
both natures. Oops. And uh, so bo both natures mix, resulting in a new hybrid nature. And then a uh, third option would be that both natures retain their integrity and remain as they are. Okay, so option one is what the monophysite position essentially says, that the divine nature, Jesus' divine nature completely absorbed his human nature and all that's left is a divine nature. So he is, he is divine in that sense. No one is, uh, at least in, in this discussion, is proposing uh, two. And then three is going to be the position that uh, the wider church will, will take. Okay, so the monophysite position here is that Jesus has one nature, and that nature is a divine nature. And the diophysite position is that Jesus has two distinct natures. Now, the the um, uh, the um, the Pope in Rome, okay, at the time was Leo, also known as Leo the Great, and so uh, Leo was uh, opposed to. To this so just there was a lot of politics that went on around this so the emperor at the time um, sort of called together some of the council and Leo um, the great opposed any council because he, he opposed what they were trying to do and but they convened the council anyway and Leo then sent a letter okay Leo so sends a letter and that letter is uh, generally known as the tome of Leo and he sent a letter, of course, um, the criticizing the monophysite uh, position, but that letter was subdued. They weren't allowed to, uh, his legates weren't allowed to read the letter. So again, the Pope is in Italy, is in Rome, and all this is happening um, on the Greek side of the Roman Empire. And so, um, you know, general, so the, the people who convened this council um, approved the monophysite heresy, uh, but then uh, the Pope uh, condemned it as a council of robbers. Okay. Uh, re rejected. Now, the emperor who was supporting the monophysites died. And his sister, who was a diophysite, who, except that Jesus had two natures, she married very quickly and aided her husband to the throne. And uh, then they convened another council. And so this is the council that's of importance to, um, to or wider Christianity. It's called the Council of Chalcedon. And this was in 451. So this council becomes a very important council. It addresses the monophysite heresy, and then it provides a formulation for how to speak about Jesus. Uh, it provides a, a dogmatic formulation and the right vocabulary. And uh, it's, it's a formulation that still um, is in use today uh, for theologians and for the church in trying to spell out exactly what it is that Christians believe about Christ. So this we will address in the next video.